Andrew Monford, uh, wrote this report about how we should adapt rather than mitigate and that actually the cost would be much lower. And it really is a brilliant read. And that's why it's great to have Andrew Monford on the line now this afternoon. Andrew, thanks for joining me on Hello, Ty's Talk. And so you've written um, another great report on actually that we would be, in a sense, much better um, learning from the history of what our predecessors have done, uh, which is to, to adapt and to learn and to use our intelligence uh, to uh, issues around climate change and when sea levels may rise, rather than spend a great deal more money uh, with uncertain outcomes. Talk, talk us through it. Well, you t I mean, you talk about um, climate sanity. I guess the, the, the place to start is, is that what we're doing at the moment is not rational. That climate change is a problem, but it's not a huge problem. The, the official view of the, in, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change is that if we do, do nothing, we'll take a hit to GDP of 2.6% in the year 2100. 2.6% is not a lot. I mean, we went down, what, in 2008 in the financial crisis? I think we went down 10% or something. You know, this, this is, it's, a, it's a problem, but it's not a huge problem. We're spending much more trying to prevent that happening than the damage itself. It, it, essentially, the, 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 the medicine is worse than the disease. That sounds familiar, so, doesn't it? <laughs> It, 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 I mean, it is extraordinary. We are spending several times more um, in, in terms of, of, of trying to deal with the problem than the problem itself would cause. So that's that's the place to start. Then you say, well, is there a, is there a, a different way we can deal with this? And that's adaptation. Adaptation as opposed to mitigation. Mitigation being trying to change the weather in, in you know, a century hence by decarbonising our society. Can we just say, okay... Instead of having a hit to, hit to uh, GDP of 2.6%, let's see what happens if we then adapt. OK, let's, let's just, uh, as the climate changes, let's deal with it. And this is something we've been doing for millennia. I mean, one of the, one of the things uh, that, that I mentioned in, in the paper is that you can find evidence of seawalls being built by prehistoric man in, in the sort of the oceans off the coast of Israel um, in, in the Mediterranean, um, you can find what appears to be an, a, a, a prehistoric seawall. Now, obviously, it's underwater now, so it wasn't a very successful seawall, but building seawalls is something several millennia on that we're very good at. Um, so if you look at the problems that climate change might cause, the damage is meant to come, the, the, the big chunks are from sea level rise and from flooding. Now, building seawalls to deal with uh, uh, sea level rise is, is, is something we're very good at. Um, we're so good, in fact, that if you look at um, how the, the, the surface area, the land surface area of the Earth has changed in the last 30 or 40 years, we've actually gained more land in coastal areas from land reclamation and silt coming down rivers and things then we've lost to sea level rise. We're actually in, in a net gain position. This moment. is one of the remarkable things, isn't it? Because the extremists and the fanatics who seem to be so utterly terrified and petrified about climate change, they highlight that, you know, sea level rise, that we're going to get flooded and we're going to just sit there and let ourselves sort of drown, which, of course, is, is nonsense. Um, whereas, actually, we, we, we've always adapted to it. Um, I, I'm also struck by... Uh, a comment in the IPCC report itself that says even if we went to net zero tomorrow, it would take a couple of hundred years before it had any impact on yeah, the, sea level. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, the, the idea that, that, that um, it, 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 we should be trying to change the weather is, is therefore clearly a nonsense. And adaptation has all these, uh, these great advantages. One, it is a fraction of the cost. You know, it's an order of magnitude cheaper. Than trying to change the weather but also you actually only need to adapt when it becomes necessary and if it definitely becomes necessary uh, at the moment we're trying to change the weather in a century's time on the assumption that the climate scientists models are uh, correct and telling us the truth now of course you know it, having been through so, a pandemic and seen that well, seen what all well, the, the, the modelers are doing there 
Exactly, because we've got quite a lot of experience of some of these modellers. I mean, we had the models that Brexit would be a complete catastrophe, there'd be an immediate recession and that half a million people would lose their jobs and that turned out to be nonsense. And then we had the COVID modelling from Neil Ferguson that also turned out to be nonsense. So why do people believe these models when... I mean, is there any evidence that if we reduce CO2 emissions, where, where's the evidence that that might actually change the climate? Um, I mean, carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas. So other things being equal, it will tend to warm the planet. But the question is whether those other things are genuinely equal. And there's all sorts of factors in there that the climate modelers, um, if you push them, will admit that they don't know. For example, the most important uh, uh, feedback in the climate system is clouds. Now, there's lots of different kinds of clouds, and a lot of them, we don't know whether they will have a warming tendency on the planet or a cooling tendency on the planet it, it, you know, in, a glo in a globally warmed world. Um, so essentially, we don't know. So coming back to the adaptation thing, of course, you only need to build, build a seawall when your current seawall starts to be overtopped by the ocean. If you know, if things genuinely get worse, with 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 mitigation, you're forced to trust the scientists and just go ahead and spend crazy sums of money. So, so the sort of um, the magnitude of what you're talking about is that the the mitigation proposals of trying to get to net zero is like an order of te at least ten times more than just adapting. Correct. The the okay. So there's 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 various estimates doing the rounds. Um, the, the the one that I like to cite, um, if only because it's 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 the biggest one, is is McKinsey, the management consultancy, who came up who said the capital cost alone might cost us twelve percent of GDP every year. That's the capital cost alone. So you may be doubling that once you get the higher sort of operational costs. Um, now, uh, adaptation. I mean, we can we could we could spend ten billion pounds. Yeah, you know, I think the, the the plan for the UK out to the e the end of the century is to spend ten billion pounds um, on seawalls, and that's the biggest cost of of of, of global warming. So, so, um, so you, you're saying it's better to adapt. I was also struck in your report, Andrew, just before we finish, that we've had fifty years of warming. Bearing in mind, back in the seventies, scientists were concerned about heading towards an ice age. We've had fifty years of warming. But there's been no change in wind speed nor summer rainfall. No, that's right. Um, the winter rainfall has increased in Scotland only. I mean, it's actually pretty flat in in in, in the rest of the country. Um, yeah, wind speeds actually have fallen. The you know, the, the hurricanes and, and and killer storms we were promised just haven't happened. Um, um, so yeah, if, it would be interesting, I think, to go back to the scare stories that we, you know, when the scare stories started in the 80s and 90s, and actually revisit some of the predictions yeah. that the British scientists made about what was going to be hitting us here in the UK, because essentially it hasn't happened. And, and just finally, I mean, you talk about adaptation. In Bangladesh, some extraordinary examples in your report about the changes in the last 40 or 50 years. Yeah, so Bangladesh is, is, is amazing because Bangladesh is always held out as somewhere that is going to suffer the most. It's a poor country and they're going, you know, they're going to be hit by hurricanes and they're going to and, and, and things like that. Um, and they're going to disappear under the ocean. Now, in the 1970s, those of us who are that old can remember the Bola hurricane, which which killed a quarter of a million people. Now, a bigger hurricane hit Bangladesh a couple of years ago. And killed, I think it was twenty five people. I mean, they, they every have adapted sadness, so well. What you're saying is they've adapted. Yeah, they built seawalls round round the coast. We've got early warning systems so they can evacuate the coast. You know, we're not, we're not saying that that, that storms are, aren't still happening. They don't seem to be getting worse, but they're you know they're 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 still happening. It's just they're they've they're adapted. an inconvenience now rather they've, than they've a adapted disaster. and they've learned. Um, Andrew, that's absolutely fantastic. Th thank you, thank you so much for 